Okay, uh, here we go with, uh, this is going to be part five of making a crucible furnace, and in fact the overall general goal is to make investment casting, so we're going to call it how to make investment castings part five. And this is what's called a burnout oven. Now I got this burnout oven, it's a Paragon, which is a really good brand oven. But it didn't have a ramping control. Now what you want when you're doing investment casting, uh, lost wax castings, you want to come up to about 350 degrees for about three hours and that melts out all the wax and burns out everything and vaporizes the wax. And then this is according to now to the manufacturer's um, uh, suggestion and what we're using is Randall and Ramson, no Ramson and Randall, I put the website right here, Ramson and Randall UltraVest uh, investment. And if you look up their website, you'll find it. Any questions, you can call them. They're very helpful. And um, what, he, what they said on the phone was to ramp it up to 350 real quick and leave it there soaking for, for three hours. And then that melts out all the wax out of your molds. And then you slowly come up 250 degrees per hour for four hours which would bring you now up to 1350 degrees and then you hold at that degrees for three more hours and then after that gets up to there then you bring it back down to 900 and just hold it until you're ready to cast and even if it's two or three or four hours later you can pull your molds out and cast them at 900 degrees and uh, what we have here is um, this is what's called a PID PID I was, calling it a, I was calling it a PIP, well that's picture in picture, but it's a PID, and the company's name, and I'll put the website down here as well, right here, um, it is Uber, A-U-B-E-R -A Instruments, and the one we're using as a ramping control is a uh, SYL2352P, uh, okay, now the P, I think, is a solid state relay and without the P is a regular relay but I have the solid state relay in here uh, I just was told that was better and originally right here in this spot there was a the original furnace that had just low high off and on and then another control here that you can control it I didn't use any of that I bought borrowed some of the components like the 220 switch here the 220 light and on the back side of here you can't see it but there's a, a heat sink on the uh, relay, that come you buy the heat sink, and the heat sink comes with a little glue that goes on it and everything, a grease, whatever, this contact grease. And um, one thing I got to say is that I was a little bit on a difficult side to, to set this up. In fact, I couldn't do it without my son. He's in the back in the other room there. He did it all, and we called the company, and they kind of walked us through it. And they also have a video on how to set it. So between that. The crazy instructions here, which do help once you learn what the, all the functions are, uh, uh, we were able to um, get it set. Now, we just went back to Harbor Freight. Now, you say what you want about Harbor Freight. You know, I got this thing over here. It was 35 bucks. It uh, goes up to 1,000 degrees, 900 and something degrees Fahrenheit. I don't like to work in centigrade. Screw that. That's Europe. We're Fahrenheit here, so we work in Fahrenheit. And... Um, uh, we checked we check the thermal couple, which is right here on the top, this little doodad on the top here. We checked the thermal top, which is a type K, by the way, and it's good for 17, 2200 degrees. So we're only going up to 1300, so we're good. And we checked that by shooting a laser at it to what it says on here. And we're within, like, a, I think we checked it. It was like 175, and this was like 173. So... You can't complain about that. that. That's perfect, in my opinion. But um, uh, right now, the furnace is off. Now, later on, you might hear this buzz. You can hear it now. That just turned itself on, and it's maintaining 350 degrees here. Now, in the beginning, in the beginning, it was going up to 360, 370, then dropping down to 340 and coming on, going up to 3. Like, it would stop at 350 and then just keep raising up because the temperature is in there. But... When the whole thing comes up to temperature, then it's just going to be more evenly distributed, and it seems to be settling down now within the 350. And it's going to shut off. See, just shut off at 351, 350. 
And then as it drops down, it drops down to 340, it'll go on again. So that works. I don't know if this is working on here. Let's see. Nah, see, it didn't work there. But if I do it on the inside, if I open this up, you can see there's the inside of the furnace, and I'm going to shoot it to the. I do this at the end. This is hitting the back. How'd you do that, Dan? Yeah, uh, gotta hold it steady. Well, I ain't too steady. Oh, okay. Let me try that. Oh, just went on. I'm still getting it. Well, I'm not as good as Dan. He was a little bit more steady than me. But I'm missing it, and I'm hitting the back wall, which is a little higher. But don't forget, when once it comes up to temperature, and it's all an even temperature throughout that thing, it's going to be more more accurate. Now, really, the truth of the matter is, it doesn't need to be, A, number one, perfect to the degree. We're not cooking a cake over here. It's just melting wax and bringing something up to temperature uh, in order to be able to cast it and, and to uh, cure the investment. So right now it's 350. It shut off. It's going to just keep doing that for another th three hours. And the, um, th this is the temperature we want it to be. The green on the bottom, Dan, is the temperature we want it to be. And the top is the thing, but it doesn't, all right, and the timing we don't have uh, showing. I guess we could show it if we wanted to, right? We can push the buttons and show it. Okay, but we're going to, like I said, I'll repeat that again. Initially, 300 to 350, melt the wax out. Hold that for three hours. Basically, vaporize the wax. Then... We're going to go 250 per hour for four hours up to 1350 total. And we're going to hold that once it gets to 1350 for three more hours. And then at the end of three hours, it's going to gradually come down to 900 degrees, turn on and hover at 900 degrees for three or four hours, five hours, whatever. But my goal is, if you add that up, that's about 10 hours. So if I leave here, say, I usually leave here 7 o'clock at night and I turn it on. And when I come back the next morning to, to work, it'll be working. It'll be right up to where I need it to be. It'll be all done. So I'd fire up my furnace, take my parts out, do what I got to do, and uh, maybe start the next batch for the next day or whatever. But uh, that's the goal right now. And uh, the next step of this series is going to be probably mixing the investment or no, I think what it's going to wind up to be is the vacuum chamber. That's the next thing I got to make is the vacuum chamber with the vacuum and all. And by the way, I did get the foot switch with the turn it off and on. So we've got that. I've got the um, the uh, clothing, and uh, I think we'll do a little bit of this video. I'll show the um, I'll show the um, safety equipment next. All right, this is. Uh, Gonna be a little bit of a demonstration on the uh, safety equipment you need to do casting. Now, um, this is a hard hat, of course, my hard hat you've seen on a lot of my videos. And I bought this shield at uh, this thing I bought at um, McMaster Car. And I, I see, I just found out it goes up in the air, which I didn't know it did that. But now, anyway, so I can put it like that or bring it down and check this, you know. In case it runs in your face, jump, uh, blows up in your face. But it just basically goes on the rim, hooks to the rim here, and it just locks into the rim, and then uh, uh, a piece of uh, expansion, uh, like a rubber band around the outside. So that's that. And then you have, I bought these things. They're called spats. Now let's see if you can see this on my foot here. Put my foot up here, which ain't an easy thing for me to do, but I got it up there. Can you see that? Okay, this goes around and it protects your shoe. Now, if you're going to wear leather shoes, if you wear leather shoes, you don't need to have these. But I don't wear leather shoes, uh, leather, I should say leather boots. And let's see, do I got this right? Oh, wait a minute. I got it wrong. It goes the other way. This, there's leather something in here. I don't know what it is, some kind of aluminum. It goes on there like that. 
and then it's got Volcro, the genius to invent that thing. And then this goes around like this here, and just protects your your instep from having any hot metal go on there. Now, while a blob of hot metal goes on the top of your rubber shoe, guess where it's going? Going through the shoe, through your foot, through the bottom of the shoe, and then hopefully it stops at the bottom, but it goes right through and put a nice hole in there. Anyway, so you want to protect yourself that way. So I got them on. Then the next part of paraphernalia, I bought this at the Harbor, Harbor Freight. For you guys that want to mock Harbor Freight, but for $10, you buy this here. It's a leather apron. And uh, if you want to buy them online or, or from a welding store, they're $27. It's the same damn thing. So that's going on here like this. It goes up on here like that. And tie that on. Can't do it too good behind me. I gotta come up with a Volcro on that eventually. And that's on there like that. Then I bought this thing. Now this is a little bit on the expensive side. This is a full leather jacket. It goes all around. 75 bucks. You can find them sometimes for 70. But this goes on like this here. If I can get it on. Uh, and so this one here is an extra large now that's I, I really take a large but this is an extra large because I, want, I like my clothes nice and roomy if you've ever seen the Amos and Andy you would know what I'm talking about okay so that's that of course you button it up and I got the spats on there's one little piece of my leg about that big that's bare now you imagine that's where the, the stuff will hit but I'll take a shot on that of course, gloves. I mean, you got to wear gloves, right? Wear the gloves. Wear the hat. And I'm good to go, man. Pour the metal. So, I, of course, I would, you know, tighten this up a little bit more. And uh, I wanted to show you. It's a little bit warm. Now, they do make one with a vest, but I don't want that because I want to be able to cover the back. And also, what I'm going to do, I'm going to join the American Legion, or the Foreign Legion. I'm going to put a, a piece of a leather old apron that I have, a leather one, and probably Velcro it or some way attach it so it comes down about that far to check the back of your neck. But the back of my neck pretty much is covered right now. There's one spot here. I might not do that. So it's not too bad. It's pretty covered, right? Is it covered if I do that? Yeah, it's about three inches. All right. So take a shot. What can I say? But anyhow, that's the safety equipment. And uh, the furnace is still going, which I'm happy about. And... Uh, Where's my, oh, there it is, okay. Under there, I don't know if you heard all that, but I'm sure you did. And uh, you get that picture. Now, by the way, take this off. It's hot as a summer gun, but that's the price you have to pay for protection. And I do agree with that, because I've seen it happen. But, uh, anyway, there's the spats, and it comes off quick rip it right off and these are these are twenty three dollars the apron was ten the thing was seventy five and uh, this was this piece on here was twenty three dollars from from uh, McMaster car and you can buy these extra for a couple of bucks I don't know why it's supposed to be clear I think there might be a maybe there's a film on that there might be a I think I see it there plastic on it yeah they ain't got better fingers than me but the other thing I wanted to show you is I bought one of these. I think I did tell you about that, the Harbor Freight. So we can check out what the what the temperature of things is. And this is pretty good. This will also work for my white metal kits. It goes up to 900 and something degrees. So that's going to be a, a, a big plus. Now, somewhere down the line, I either want to make or buy, make or buy a, a um, what do you call them, a parometer. Because I want to be able to check my, the accuracy of my um, uh, metal keep it kind of consistent I think that's important to get good castings so that's it for now from part five hope you enjoy my videos please subscribe and uh, we'll see you again on part six of this series thanks for watching